This lecture video will illustrate some examples of using the Kahn Ingold prelog convention or the RS system to name the configuration of chiral centers. Each chiral center has two possible configurations itself and its mirror image, and these two possible configurations are des designated R or S. To determine which stereocenter is the S stereocenter and which is the R stereocenter, we assign priorities to substituents using a set of rules. We then assign a letter based on the rel relative positions of these priority groups. Let's look at some examples. First, let's consider 1-bromo-344 trimethyl pentane. Pause the video and see if you can draw the structure of this compound from its IUPAC name. The structure of this compound looks like this. Now we need to identify its chiral center. Again, pause the video and see if you can identify that on your own. The chiral center is this carbon. This is the only carbon that is sp3 hybridized and contains four different groups. Now let's draw both of the mirror images of this chiral center. We will draw it out in perspective to make it easier to see. Here is one enantiomer of 1-bromo-344 trimethylpentane. Now let's draw the mirror image. Here are the two enantiomers of 1-bromo-344 trimethylpentane. Now we will assign a priorities to each of the groups on each of the chiral center enantiomers. First, let's look at the enantiomer on the left. The lowest priority group is almost always the hydrogen. The highest priority group will be the tert butyl group. The reason for that is all of the other substituents other than hydrogen are carbon, and so we have to look one atom further out, and it is the tert-butyl group that then has priority, because that carbon is bound to three carbons, whereas the carbon on the methyl is bound to three hydrogens, and the carbon on the ethyl bromide is bound to two hydrogens and a carbon. So the tert-butyl group, which is bound, whose carbon is bound to three carbons, wins out. The second highest will be the ethyl bromide, because it is bound to one carbon and two hydrogens, and the next lowest priority will be the methyl, which is bound to three hydrogens. We now need to point the lowest priority group, which is the hydrogen, away from us. This may be easier if, we make, if you make a model of this compound. Conveniently, it's been drawn so that the hydrogen is pointing away from us. And we have to look at the direction of rotation in order of priority. Our order of priority will go from group 1 to group 2 to group 3. This is a counterclockwise rotation, and that is given the designation S. Now let's look at our mirror image. Again, our hydrogen will be our lowest priority group, our tert butyl will be our highest priority group, and the other groups, again, are the same as on the other molecule. We need to point our lowest priority group away from us, which again is how this molecule is drawn, and then we look at the rotation in the direction of the order of priority, from 1 to 2 to 3. This is a clockwise rotation, and that is given the designation R. Finally, let's give these two enantiomers complete IUPAC names. The way we name chiral centers in molecules is that we put the stereochemical designation first, just like we did with cis or trans. So the compound on the left is S1-bromo-344 trimethylpentane, and the compound on the right is R. 1-bromo-344 trimethylpentane. Now let's identify a few more examples. What is the stereochemical designation and the IUPAC name for this compound? First, let's assign priorities to the groups around the chiral center. The chiral center is obvious in this molecule because it has been drawn out in perspective. The four groups attached to this chiral center are the bromine, the ethyl bromine, the methyl, and a hydrogen. It can often help to draw in that hydrogen so that you don't forget about it. Now let's sign priorities. The hydrogen is going to be the lowest priority group, and the bromine is going to be the highest priority group. The ethyl bromine is the second highest priority, and the methyl is the third. Now we need to orient this molecule so that the lowest priority group, our hydrogen, is pointing away from us. There are several ways to deal with this when we have the hydrogen drawn not away from us, or the lowest priority group not away from us. Since the lowest priority group is coming out towards us, one way to handle this is to look at the direction of rotation from lowest 
uh, from highest to lowest priority, and then reverse it since the hydrogen is pointing towards us instead of away from us. So because the rotation would be clockwise, but the hydrogen is pointing towards us, so if we turn the molecule around, the direction of rotation would be counterclockwise, making this the S isomer. You could also make the model and turn it so that it's away from you, so that the hydrogen is pointing away from you. Or you could redraw the molecule. Whichever of these ways makes the most sense to you is the one you should stick with. Now let's name this molecule. It has four carbons, and that is its longest chain, making this a butane. We have two substituents, both of which are bromines. We want to start our numbering on the carbon that gives us the lowest substituent numbers. This would be on the right side of the molecule and moving around to the left. This would give our substituents numbers 1 and 3, which is the lowest possible in this molecule. And remember that the stereochemical designation comes first. So the name of this compound will be S13-dibromobutane. Let's look at another example. This molecule contains a chiral center. Right here, it is an sp3 hybridized carbon with four different groups attached to it. Remember that the D stands for deuterium, which is a heavier form of hydrogen. Now let's assign our priorities. Hydrogen is still going to be the lowest priority group here. And the two carbon-containing substituents are going to be the two highest groups, making the deuterium the second lowest. Now as we compare the two carbons, this one and this one, they're the same, so we have to move one atom out further to look for the point of difference. That is this position and this position. The carbon that is bound to oxygen is going to be higher priority than the carbon that is just bound to two hydrogens, making this the highest priority substituent followed by this one. Remember that to determine the stereochemical assignment, we have to point the lowest priority group, which is hydrogen, away from us. Since it's pointing towards us, we can use the trick of remembering that it will be the reverse of what it seems to be. And so the direction of rotation is counterclockwise with the hydrogen pointing towards us, so it will be clockwise with the hydrogen pointing away from us, making this R. Let's look at one final example. This molecule has a single stereocenter, which is a chiral center, because it is sp3 hybridized and has four different groups bound to it. Remember that the fourth group is a hydrogen. Now let's assign our priorities. The hydrogen will be lowest, all of our other substituents are carbons. We have to look at what those carbons are bound to. This carbon is bound to two carbons, while all of the other carbons are bound to one carbon and two hydrogens. Additionally, the double bond is accounted for in assuming that that carbon is bound to three carbons. The single carbon or the single bond and twice, it's counted twice for the double bond. And so this will be our highest priority group. When we compare the other two carbons, we again have to look one carbon away, one atom away, to this center. This is our first point of difference. The carbon on the right is bound to an oxygen, where the carbon on the left is just bound to carbon and hydrogen, making the one on the right the second highest priority, and the one on the left the third highest priority. Now we have to orient our lowest priority group, which is our hydrogen, away from us, and it is conveniently drawn that way already. Now we just look at the direction of rotation from 1 to 3. This is counterclockwise, making this the S designation.